What's the best and healthiest way for a woman to lose weight? Lift weights. Lift weights. And eat. And eat, yes, absolutely. And you could have a very slight calorie deficit towards the end of the evening. Running? As a way of burning calories? The problem is people think that they can out-exercise a bad diet. And you can't. Composition okay. of your diet matters immensely. And yes. I hate calling it lose weight. I, I now call it recomposition. recomposition. Yeah. But let me put it in context. Yeah, go run. You're going to burn 100 calories a mile, three Girl Scout cookies, three Thin Mints, U.S. favorites, mm. is 180 calories. So you have to run two miles to eat three cookies. Most of us, if you're going to eat cookies, don't eat three Thin Mints. You eat the whole sleeve. Right. To your point, it is impossible to out exercise food unless you're a high level athlete. And who's even then, no. Thousand calories. Even then, no, because we look at diet composition and we see that um, endurance athletes who use a lot of high sugary mm -hmm. type carbohydrate, for like the gels and the sports stuff, they've interrupted their gut microbiome so much that they have sugar alcohols. Yeah. Well, it's not even that, it's the phyla change. We're seeing a decrease in the diversity, even though they're exercising, mm -hmm. and we see that exercise increases the diversity of the gut microbiome, is what they're eating during the training with the heat and hypoxic stress. Wow. That is creating the growth of the Firmicutes uh, phyla that's associated with obese outcomes. So that's so a, a It changes the gut. The gut okay. microbiome. Yeah. yeah. If they are... So Eating. we have this mis yeah we have this misconception that if you're an elite athlete and you're burning all these calories then you're just eating to fuel right but it's not it's the quality of the diet if we want to perform well whatever performance means if you're Olympic athlete down to recreational person who just wants to accomplish a 5K the composition of your diet is immensely important. What about Zempec? Everybody seems to be on a Zempec GLP ones. I prescribe it. And our clinic is all perimenopause and menopause. And so we always start with, let's see how you do with lifestyle changes first. So we give that three to six months. When they come back, every time they come back, we're doing another body composition change. And for probably 50% of the patients, lifestyle plus or minus HRT, their, their body composition changes. They're happy. They're health. You know, they're much healthier. Everything's moving in the right direction. So now we're left with the people who are doing all the things. This isn't the typical story of people that start a Zempec though. They see it on Instagram and then a week after I'll be at their house and I'll be like, we, we, and they'll tell me, oh yeah, I'm on a Zempec. And it's really, it's usually just someone sees it online, they hear it on a podcast and they're on it within a couple of days. The access is getting easier. The price is coming down and there is for any medication, there are risks, there are benefits and there's ways that will promote health and with any medication you can not promote health if you give i mean glp ones can be revolutionary for certain people yeah. a lot of people are not training for a 5k let alone anything else mm -hmm. and we know if we go very simply fat cells right they make a different type of estrogen they're inflammatory you have insulin resistance and all of this sets you up at a deficit to say i want to get healthier it for women, we'll say you have PCOS, who already have a predisposition for insulin resistance. They have a harder time losing weight because now they're also storing visceral fat. We know they get on this cycle with hormonal change. You know, being on Ozempic allows them to lose weight and combat insulin resistance in a faster way than they've ever been able to do before. And especially when it comes to fertility and you're on a timeline, that can be really revolutionary. When you lose weight because that estrone decreases, many women with PCOS, if they were overweight, will start ovulating again because that suppression from the additional estrogen is gone and their infl inflammation markers go down, their insulin resistance decreases. So there's a subset of people who have found their life changed by them. And we never want to discredit that. Mm -hmm. Many people have had difficulty losing weight, chronic medical conditions, have been able to reverse them. And this has been a tool in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. Because about 70% of Americans would fit in that category of chronic health yeah. conditions, difficulty mm -hmm. losing weight. 73% yeah. right now are, are overweight or obese. So should 73% of Americans be on GLP ones? And it's higher in women. Yeah. Well, we always, mm -hmm. one common thing is, having tools in the toolbox and being able to know when to use them, when to offer them. Just like when we have the HRT discussion, we don't want to see people, we'll say women for this discussion, not being offered a therapeutic option because, or not choosing it out of fear. Well, when I hear that it's going to help me lose weight. 
Mm-hmm. And I've got two options. I can go out and lift all these weights, Stacey, and I can, uh, which, you know, one day I don't, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Go to the gym, I have to put my shoes on, all, all these all these things. Or I can take this injection. And lose all your muscle and exactly. lose your bone and end up like the little floating figure in Wally movie that I've talked about before. Right. And that's that's my fear of just blanket people but using. You're them. also, whether you mean to or not, giving the illusion that, you know, willpower is all you need to lose weight. Right. By what you said. Right. I can either do these hard things or I can choose this medication, which appears to be the easier way out. And two things can be true at once. People can work extremely hard. Maybe they don't understand exactly what they should be doing. And that's part of what we're trying to change the discussion on. But reversing some metabolic change, even initially, can make a big difference in their game plan. But you will lose body weight on these medications. And so you have to have somebody, you know, guiding the ship. I think what we all don't love is the access without oversight, meaning nobody's helping you say, how are you not losing muscle? How are you doing this in a safe fashion? You can just text somebody on an app and suddenly and get medication and have to the medication house. shipped to your house. Right. You know, in our clinic, it is an hour long. Now they're coming in to discuss the GLP-1 option. It is an hour long visit of risks, benefits, side effects, protein intake, resistance training, mandatory. We will follow your bone density. We will follow your bone mass. I mean, your muscle mass. You know, we have these scanners. These are great. Available. And we're not going to get to a number on the scale and sacrifice your long-term health. And my patients are drinking the Kool-Aid. They're coming in. They, they've they found, you know. They, They're coming to you for a reason. Yeah. And so I'm a little bit unique in my clinic in that I have a social media following and people kind of watch a few things before they come see me. So they know my, they're not shocked by me giving this advice because I give it all day on social media. So if you give them the Zempec. But they still don't go to the gym. They still don't do anything else. Then we'll stop giving it to them. They won't be healthy. And they know that. We've talked to them about that. We've explained it on the front end. That this is a tool in your toolkit because we can see their muscle mass. We won't renew the prescription if they've lost the muscle mass. So if you are losing weight and not lifting and eating enough protein on Ozempic or any way else, and you do a body composition, you may see total weight lost. You will see pounds of muscle loss, you may see body fat percentage loss. But if you do this correctly with enough protein in your diet and lifting weights, the amount of muscle loss will be very small versus amount of fat loss. Mm -hmm. So we know we're going to lose a little muscle, but you can't lose eight pounds of muscle. Right. Right. So we can tell. And I give them the hard numbers like 10% 10% is acceptable. We're going over that. We're getting into the danger zone. We're going to cut back on your dose. We're going to, you know, but they commit to the the work on the front end. I think that's the important point is that these GLP-1 antagonists don't burn your fat. They burn, they stop you eating they, as they much. They stop their satiety. Which is going to mess mm-hmm. up, which is going to reduce everything. Because I was thinking about myself, I was thinking, well, I, I go to the gym every day, I'm going to keep going. So maybe if I had a, a little bit of a Zempec or whatever it's called, then my, it would burn my fat, but actually that's not it's what's not going to no. It's, it's just going to stop me eating, mm-hmm. which is going to reduce my muscle, my bone. Exactly. Right. Okay. Goodbye biceps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, ah, the, yeah. that's the thing. It's like... Then I'll lose my subscribers. And yeah, then, that's why yeah. they're nice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So to this person asking what's the best and healthiest way to lose weight, the response is stop eating the cookies and start lift, lifting some weights. No, the 80-20 rule. Right. So 80% of the time you're on it, right? You're paying attention to a high quality diet. You are eating according to circadian rhythm. You are doing the strength training, you're getting the good sleep. And then 20% is life where I'm going to stay up late. I'm going to have some wine or whiskey. I'm going to go out. I'm going to be on vacation. So you're not excluding all the fun things in life. If it comes to a point where you're like, I'm still not budging the needle, then maybe it's a 90-10 rule where 90% of the time you're on it and 10% is the life factor. There's these hard and fast rules I've been accused of giving. I don't give rules. I give optimization ideas. So it's not following strict 80-20 or 90-10. It's what fits in your life. And if you're really motivated on losing weight, the first thing I tell people to do is ditch alcohol. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to lose the yeah. the part on the belly. Yeah, sure. Is there not like an exercise I can do just no. to burn the part on There's the belly? There's no you can't exercise. Burn. <laughs> so visceral fat's a little bit different. It's like a whole different organ. So, you know, when we talk about visceral fat, it has different 
drivers. You know, we drive fat to the intra-abdominal cavity. It has, it creates a different cytokine. Subcutaneous fat is a storage facility. It is when we overeat calories, we will drive fat under the skin. And it's kind of genetically determined. Females tend to gain about their hips and thighs. Okay. And actually that hip and thigh fat is protective for cardiovascular disease in a premenopausal women, Mm -hmm. not in men, but in women. And so it is, so, but when that fat shifts to the intra-abdominal cavity, it starts, that fat is much more metabolically active than the fat under our skin, and it creates these pro-inflammatory cytokines. And then you end up in this negative feedback cycle of, you know, your liver starts becoming dysfunctional, insulin resistance increases, that drives more fat to the visceral cavity, increases inflammation, and it just goes on and on and on. So get liposuction. No, no, no. You can't lipo you, the viscera. Okay. They're, they're inside. Yeah. That fat that's really inside the abdominal cavity is what we're talking about, that visceral fat, which is the worst kind. But well, what about liposuction? Can't I just suck it out? People are doing all kinds with that Under fat. the skin. You under the skin you can, and that's an aesthetic guts. decision. But the stuff under the skin. Oh, sh- Liposuction it out. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? No, it'll come back. Yeah. All these things we're talking about, it sounds like a lot of instructions, and it is, actually, but... When you layer them on, it becomes your lifestyle. Yes. It's not a diet. It's not an exercise program. It's just how, how I live. live. Right. 